And we're starting today with Robert Roode, as it's been over a year since he last competed in a WWE ring, and after multiple neck surgeries, many fear that the former NXT champion's days in the ring are over. Recently, it was reported that Rude has been shadowing producers backstage at WWE events, but now a major change may be a sign that he is now working full-time in the role. Sean Ross Sapp reported behind Fightful's paywall that Rude produced a match between Akira Tozawa and JD McDonough on this week's main event, his first match he's produced solo. Before this week's match, Rude had been shadowing Jamie Noble and helped with producing Rey Mysterio's US title win over Austin Theory, but that match had been mostly a Noble effort. Fightful's report added that internally, Rude has been relisted as Bobby Rude, which may be a Vince McMahon call, as the chairman insisted Petey Williams instead be called Pete. Whatever name Rude goes by in WWE, producing his first match solo is a big step for the Canadian veteran, and it could indeed be a sign that he is now a fully-fledged, full-time producer backstage. For the second time in less than a year, CM Punk has been suspended from AEW programming, and once again, his actions backstage have forced AEW to change its plans. Prior to his physical altercation with Jack Perry, it had been practically guaranteed that the Chicago-made star would be competing in his hometown at All Out, but what exactly did AEW have planned? Fightful Select reports that one match on the table for All Out would have seen Punk defend the Real World's Championship against Ricky Starks, who has been feuding with Punk over the summer. From what Fightful was told by sources, the match would have likely headlined All Out, but there's no word on the status of the match now that Punk has been suspended. While no sources have confirmed the match is off, it certainly looks unlikely, as this Saturday's collision will see Starks challenge Ricky Steamboat to a strap match at All Out on Sunday. Starks had attacked Steamboat on an episode of Collision earlier this month, earning himself a kayfabe suspension, which was initially 30 days, but later reduced to 28 days. Some suspected that this suspension is because of an injury, but Sapp confirmed that Starks isn't hurt and there were always plans to keep him on TV. Starks was not at this week's Dynamite in Chicago, and it was reported by PW Insider that neither was Punk, who was in Las Vegas this week, receiving an award from the Cauliflower Alley Club. The Iron Mike Mazurki Award recognizes those who have made exceptional contributions, and Punk was described as a trailblazing figure who undeniably left an indelible mark on the industry. CM Punk accepted his award in person, and as a photo shared online showed, the controversial star had the chance to speak with JBL and Ron Simmons at the event, and we can only wonder what they discussed. While Punk may have had a good time at the Cauliflower Alley Club Awards ceremony, he is once again bringing bad press to AEW. And what do you think is next in the future of CM Punk? More about CM Punk as his suspension has once again raised questions about whether his AEW return is viable, and he and Jack Perry will hopefully spend their time off to reflect on things. Unsurprisingly, neither Punk nor Perry appeared on last night's AEW Dynamite, a show Punk wasn't expected to be on anyway, but we may already know when his suspension will end. In tweets shared after the all-in controversy, AEW promoted upcoming tapings in Uncasville, Connecticut and Wichita, Kansas, and CM Punk was front and center of the promotional images. The Uncasville taping will happen on October 28th, and in the comments, one fan asked if Punk would be there, saying they won't be buying a ticket if he's not on the show. Another asked if this use of Punk on the promotional material means Punk's suspension will be done by then, and there's been no confirmation by anybody from the company. The last time Punk was suspended, it would be over half a year before fans saw him again, but could his comeback happen in less than two months' time? We'll have to wait and see. A lot has been said about CM Punk following All In, but what does the future look like for Jack Perry? While Punk was featured front and center on the promotional materials, Perry wasn't shown at all, leaving fans speculating that he might be suspended longer than Punk. We can't say for certain what fate awaits the former Jungle Boy, but PW Insider confirmed that Perry was not at this week's Dynamite in Chicago. That may have been for the best, as it's been reported that this incident killed morale in AEW, with many wrestlers feeling impacted that this situation has overshadowed AEW's largest ever event. Perry is expected to receive the majority of the blame for All In, but what do you think to this situation, and how would you react if you were running AEW? Let us know in the comments below. Clearly, this situation at All In is one that Tony Khan is not happy with, but it wasn't just the suspensions of Punk and Perry that led to changes being made to this week's Dynamite. On Twitter, Khan shared that due to various factors, changes had been made to AEW Dynamite, but did not give any specifics as to what changes had been made. 
Khan did say that these changes were made because of Hurricane Adalia affecting flights, as well as minor illnesses to big talent who had been traveling this week. Once again, what is happening behind the scenes in AEW is overshadowing what's happening in the ring, and we're wishing those who have taken ill a speedy recovery ahead of All Out. What happened backstage at All In was the climax of a tough couple of weeks for CM Punk, who got lost on London's tube system trying to get to his hotel after arriving in the UK. The reason Punk took the tube is because AEW had not arranged for a private car to collect him from the airport, and he's not the only one who had difficulties getting around in the English capital. PW Torch reports that many AEW stars who have traveled internationally in the past were far from impressed with how AEW handled things, especially compared to how travel goes in WWE. The report added that multiple wrestlers were not picked up from the airport, as is tradition with WWE or New Japan, another company which has treated talented all-in far better when traveling. It's worth bearing in mind that this was AEW's first ever international event, and this was a learning process for those with the company, and lessons were indeed learned on how not to do things. Following AEW All In, the company wasted no time in announcing All In 2024 for August 25th next year, and hopefully the travel situation will be much better than this year's underwhelming experience. We've got some concerning news regarding Kimber Lee, as the former NXT and Impact Wrestling star is facing multiple legal issues following an arrest earlier this year. Many fans will remember Lee for her allegations of abuse that ultimately led to WWE parting ways with Nash Carter, but now Lee is facing some serious accusations of her own. PW Insider reports that Lee is set for a pre-trial hearing on September 25th in Highlands County Court, which stems from an arrest in May in Sebring, Florida. At the arrest, Lee was charged with DUI, resisting an officer with violence and battery on a law enforcement officer, and Officer PJ Roberts wrote a detailed report about the incident. Officer Roberts noted that a gray Kia Soul was facing the wrong direction and stopped in the northbound lane on the 11th of May, and that the vehicle then drove over the lane onto the paved shoulder, almost colliding with the face of the guardrail. A frantic chase ensued with the officer identifying Lee and describing her as having bloodshot, watery eyes, and she slurred as she spoke. Lee would also try several times to leave the area, and when the officer tried to cuff her, she struck the officer in the chest before she was arrested for battery. The report adds that when attempting to cuff her other hand, Lee violently resisted, injuring the officer, and it was clear that she was heavily intoxicated at the time. After being arrested, a breathalyzer revealed that she gave a sample of .140, far above the legal limit in the state of Florida, which is .08. Lee entered a plea of not guilty to all charges on July 7th and waived her rights to a speedy trial due to not being able to afford a lawyer. Lee, who confirmed her retirement from wrestling earlier this year, has not mentioned her arrest on social media, despite being active online. The charges of resisting an officer with violence as well as battery of a law enforcement officer are third-degree felonies and both hold a maximum jail time of five years each and will continue to follow her case for updates. In September 2020, the WWE released The Authors of Pain, and since then, the former NXT and Raw Tag Team Champions have done little in the wrestling world. While AOP had intended to open their own promotion, Wrestling Entertainment Series, the inaugural event was cancelled due to abysmal ticket sales, but now the pair have reportedly come home. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reports that AOP have re-signed with WWE, and they actually returned to the company in 2012, though this could not be 100% confirmed. One source stated that the AOP have been back before Vince McMahon came back, meaning it was a Triple H call to bring Akam and Razor back into the fold. We already know that when Vince McMahon returned as executive chairman, WWE put a pause on signing any new talent, further proof that the pair weren't brought back after McMahon's comeback. AOP haven't wrestled since they got released three years ago, and sources that Fightful spoke to added that AOP made sure their former manager Paul Ellering was heavily involved in negotiations. PW Insider added that the plan is for AOP and Ellering to return to NXT, possibly as soon as next month, and that the group were being discussed behind the scenes at this week's show. AOP were actually on an internal travel list back in May, but have not made a return to the road, but fans can expect to see Akam, Rezar, and Ellering on Tuesday nights in due time. More from AEW now, as the acclaimed and Billy Gunn captured the World Trios Championship at All In, the first taste of AEW gold ever for Daddy Ass. On this week's Dynamite, the new champions celebrated their huge win in London, and they also introduced possibly the most unique set of titles fans have ever seen. 
In an in-ring segment, the Acclaim revealed their custom AEW Trios titles, which feature gold plates and a reddish-pink strap, and that strap has a very unique feature. As Max Caster demonstrated, the ends of the title strap have scissor designs, allowing the titles to scissor themselves, a feature that earned a huge pop from the crowd. On this Saturday's collision, the acclaimed and Gunn will have their first title defense against Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker, and we'll have to see if the scissoring trio can keep hold of their scissoring titles. This Friday's SmackDown, John Cena will make his return to WWE programming, and Cena will be live at WWE events every Friday night all the way through to October 27th. This will mark Cena's longest return to WWE programming in years, and fans are understandably excited about this, but not everyone agrees with John's decision to come back. Speaking to the 10 count, former WWE writer Brian Gewertz argued that Cena is in the ring to return during the ongoing SAG after strikes, saying it is a bad look for the 16-time world champion. While WWE is non-union affiliated, Gewertz argued that Cena can be seen as having no problem performing on TV when many actors are having to risk their future in order to support the strikes and implement change. Interestingly, The Rock, who Gewertz works with, was at one time expected to appear at SummerSlam, but opted against the idea due to how it'd look to be making money performing during the strikes. WWE, of course, has no problem bringing Cena, one of their most popular stars, back for the next two months, but is John in the wrong for returning, or are you just happy to see him back in the ring? One man who knows all about John Cena is Roman Reigns, who this week reached a new milestone in his career. This week, Reigns passed three years as Universal Champion, a title he won on August 30th, 2020 at Payback, defeating Braun Strowman and The Fiend in a triple threat match. Reigns has dominated WWE in a way that no other champion has done before, and with his time as champion showing no signs of ending anytime soon, expect more milestones to be reached by our Tribal Chief. At Night of Champions in May, Zoe Stark aligned herself with Trish Stratus and aided the seven-time women's champion during her match with Becky Lynch. At one point, though, Stark hit her Z360 finisher on Lynch, which didn't go right, and the man would suffer a legitimate bloody nose in addition to her loss. Speaking to House of Wrestling, Stark joked that she made a statement at the expense of Lynch's face, but seriously explained that they talked about what happened after the match. When Stark got backstage, she apologized to Lynch for what happened, and the man was said to be okay with her, as the situation was chalked up to a sucky thing that just happens in wrestling. On this week's Raw, Lynch defeated Stark in a Falls Count Anywhere match and will face Stratus in a cage at Payback, and hopefully this cage will be able to keep Stark and her Z360 at bay. For years, it's been speculated that Conor McGregor could one day make his way to WWE, with even Stephanie McMahon saying at one point that WWE were looking into the matter. It hasn't happened yet, but on Twitter this week, McGregor shared an idea for a possible WWE character, one that would be a relative of Shane, Stephanie, and the McMahon tribe. My WWE character, the babyface boss, Ron McMahon. I specialize in ambush and power control. Abandoned by the family in Ireland, but I made my own fortune brewing alcohol, and now I'm back, and boy am I pissed. If WWE were to bring McGregor in, it'd almost certainly be under his real name that has massive mainstream clout, but do you think we'll ever see the notorious one in a WWE ring? Or is this simply never going to happen? It was a year ago this Sunday the WWE hosted its Clash at the Castle event in Cardiff, Wales, which proved to be a huge success for the promotion. The show saw several records be broken and would prove that a premium live event could work in the UK, and the event earned both WWE and the Welsh capital a ton of money. As reported by WrestleNomics, an official release stated that last year's event delivered a massive 10 to 1 return on investment by channeling £21.8 million back into the Welsh economy. That amount is equivalent to approximately $28 million that Clash of the Castle brought to the Welsh economy, and with the 10 to 1 return, it means Cardiff paid $2.8 million to WWE for the show. Being paid close to $3 million for one evening of entertainment is a huge win for WWE, and it's no wonder why Nick Khan has said WWE will look to gain subsidies for any premium live event going forward. With the success of Clash at the Castle and Money in the Bank, many expect WrestleMania to one day come to the UK, and if so, expect WWE to get paid an insane amount for the showcase of the Immortals. And we're ending today with The Undertaker, whose decades of work helped inspire so many wrestlers, but it's not just those in the ring who have been inspired by the dead man. At a recent Drake concert in Vancouver, Travis Scott joined Drizzy on stage, and as he did this, they played The Undertaker's entrance music as Scott made his own entrance. 
Fans of the concert popped at The Undertaker's iconic music, and they were also happy to see Travis Scott start his portion of the show, as it shows the Hall of Famer's impact extends far beyond the wrestling industry.